For 150 years, people have come to Blackpool to be entertained. The glory days are long gone. The crowds have been thinning since the 1980s, but the fortunes of this town are still tied to tourism, an industry that's been hit hard by COVID-19. It's peak season here. Summer is in full swing. The council says visitor numbers are at a five-year high, but after lockdown, they need to be. Businesses are up against it. Jobs are being lost and are hard to find. I was just wondering if you've got any vacancies at the moment. You've not? Uh, we are full staff work. You've got CV. Yeah. Is there any job vacancies at the moment? There's not. Cheers. Connor was made redundant in March. He's 18 and struggling to find work. My manager called me, Connor, we don't need you anymore. And then that was about it, really. You signed on for Universal Credit. What's your experience of that been like? <laughs> it's a bit demoralising. I didn't want to have to do it, but if I've got a bills to pay and stuff, I've got to do it. I saw Betty Davis on this stage. At the old Odeon Cinema, the producer of Funny Girls is feeling glum. The show was supposed to restart on Saturday, but the performance was cancelled when the government put the lifting of lockdown on pause. You've got 40 staff furloughed. How many of those do you think you'll be able to bring back? If we can open sometime within this month or by the end of the month, we'll be able to bring all 40 back. And if you can't? Going into next month, we'll have to start laying people off. So you're coming back on. <laughs> Backstage, we met Jamie Morris, drag artist, pantomime dame and limited company director. Because he pays himself in dividends, or did when he was working, he's had to survive on universal credit and a bounce back loan that's almost gone. We borrowed enough money to see us through till October. And what happens in October if you're not performing? Then I'll have to go and try and find another job. And I think with Funny Girls meant to be opening at the weekend, um, it just gave us that little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. But um, now that's gone. That's gone. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's bleak. It's really bleak. What do you do? <laughs> Blackpool was up against it even before this crisis and it's far from being alone. 100 miles south, Wolverhampton has been trying to reverse years of industrial decline. This is a city of workshops and factories, but the unemployment rate was almost twice the national average before the pandemic. The Joseph Roundtree Foundation has identified the local authorities with the highest furlough rates, the highest number of workers in sectors of the economy that have been hardest hit, and the lowest number of job vacancies. Wolverhampton is one of them. Around 1 in 15 adults was out of work here before the crisis began. That could rise to 1 in 5 before the end of the year as the job retention scheme is phased out. Good morning, Ellie. Hi, Laura. How are you? Yeah. Lockdown here has caused hardship and hunger. Laura Plant's family made it through thanks to the kindness of neighbours. The support of this food sharing service was vital. She says some weeks she had as little as £7 to spend on food. Right, we just spare money. Brilliant. You buy tins of beans, you buy bags of pasta, you buy 20 sausages for a pound. Um, and anything that comes with a yellow sticker at the end of the day. During lockdown, you say you were spending seven pounds a week on food. Yeah. People will be amazed, isn't this, that you managed to survive on seven pounds you, a week food yeah. shop. It, you, you don't, How on earth do you do that? You don't eat well. You eat, you eat bread, you, your children eat real food and you have a bowl of cereal. That's how you survive on it. It's hard. I don't want to cry, don't, don't make me cry. <laughs> but people do it, I'm not the only person who does it, other people do it. Other people live on a lot less than what you've had to live on. For many, government support has been the difference between hope and despair. Joseph Roundtree Foundation describes the response so far as bold and compassionate, but insists there's much more to do. So what the government should do is support people's incomes while they are not able to work because of COVID-19. But that's only part of the solution. And really, if we don't look to the next phase and get a good plan in place for how we're going to create new good quality jobs in the next few months that people can move into, we're only ever going to be supporting people's incomes. We're not going to be looking towards recovery. The government has promised an economic levelling up, bringing places like Wolverhampton up to speed with London, which has been powering ahead for years. But the capital's outer boroughs are highly exposed. They have some of the highest furlough rates in the UK. In Haringey, the tubes and the trains are still running largely empty. Social distancing is slowing the recovery down. 
The shopping parades are pockmarked. Some businesses didn't make it back from lockdown. Ify and Emeka's did. Their Nigerian restaurant reopened last Friday. The financial impact is actually less about when you closed because almost you can do what you can to cut your costs. It's more about what is going to happen when you open because actually then all your costs will go back up to the full whack. But will the demand and your income go back? You know, we have reduced our, our opening days. Can you make money running like that? We'll find out. <laughs> The full economic impact of COVID-19 has yet to be felt. The initial blow was cushioned by government support. As the furlough scheme is phased out, jobs will be lost and some communities will feel it more keenly than others.